Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2022 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director, in conversation with Maria Nero, the Director and Producer of the documentary, The Art of Unwar. This film will be a part of our 20th anniversary film festival. Our in-person events begin September 19th, running through September 25th, followed immediately by our virtual festival access beginning September 26th, ending October the 2nd. All the information regarding our events, the film festival schedule and ticket information can be found at our website, peacefilmfest.org. And now please let's welcome Maria Nero. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your really compelling film. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm thrilled that it's in the festival. I look forward to this. We're delighted to have the film in the festival. So let's start out by uh, talking a little bit about the film. Maria, can you describe The Art of Unwar for us? Sure. The Art of Unwar is a 60 minute documentary that focuses on the life and work of artist Krzysztof Wodyczko. He's a Polish born artist. He's an international artist and uh, he's been residing in, in the United States for decades. And uh, it's about his work, which is artistic interventions. It's also known as engagement art or public art. And he creates large scale public projections that address social issues. And my film focuses on uh, the work that he's produced over the past five decades that uh, concentrate on war and uh, war trauma uh, displacement and immigration and xenophobia. It's, it's very visual. His work is mesmerizing and captivating. It, essentially, uh, the work that he's done in the past few decades consists of animating historical monuments throughout the world. We see in the film how he animates the Lincoln Monument, which is in Union Square Park. Uh, with the voices and faces and hand gestures of war veterans. And they speak about their experiences, their plights, their trauma, how they're affected by war. And uh, it's just absolutely amazing that, that, he, that he's been able to do this, you know, and, and uh, relay the message of what veterans go through. Also working with uh, Iraqi refugees and migrants from uh, Northern Africa. Uh, they speak about their experiences of how they're making uh, their journey um, and they get caught up in human trafficking and many of them don't survive. Um, so they're very intense, powerful stories and also Christoph's story of trauma, his experience with war. Christoph is is certainly interviewed, and um, uh, you know, and as you said, conveys his own personal uh, connection to this story. But what attracted you as a filmmaker to to capturing this beautiful, ephemeral, and and very emotional work that Christoph does? I had known about his work for a while, but I actually met him 10 years ago at the Lincoln projection. And that was the first projection that I've seen it live. Now, a lot of people know his work. He's in many history books and professors teach about his work. And he's been teaching all his life. He's been in academia. But not a lot of people get to experience his projections. They happen just for a few nights or maybe a month. And so they are, in fact, ephemeral. You don't they don't really repeat. And this was the first time I saw it and I was just completely mesmerized. I thought it was, I knew right on the spot, I'm gonna make a documentary about this projection. That's how it started. And then I just looked into all his work and started piecing, you know, pieces of the puzzle together. And I thought this would make a great film about an artist who's been so committed to addressing war time and time again throughout his over five decade uh, career, committed to voicing, uh, denouncing war, drawing attention to the atrocities of war. 
I, I, I thought it was very powerful. I mean, there were so many reasons to make the documentary. I also like the fact that his work is non-gratuitous. It's not, you know, it does happen in galleries, but for the most part, it's about utilizing public space. And people who don't have a voice in society or don't get to be heard, that is part of the medium. That is part of the social practice art that he does, working with community organizations. And, and then these people, these communities, end up using the project as a vehicle for healing, as a way to speak about their plights. Because a lot of these people, they're traumatized. They've been through hell. And so it's very hard for them to uh, just you know get up and speak. But he provides a podium. He provides an opportunity that makes it easy for them to sort of speak. They become anonymous. They're anonymatized by the process, you know, because he's projecting them. So you don't really, you can't really make out who they are. So that, that element of an anonymity really helps people who are traumatized to speak more freely. I think he said it, that it's much easier to speak from a monument that stands before us, you know, 50 feet above us, where we look up to tell the world exactly what they've gone through than it is if we're just sitting in a more intimate setting and face to face. It's, it's brilliant when you think about it. It is. His work has, has such a compelling emotionality to it. Um, and you do a, a wonderful job of capturing that. And so as you went along as a filmmaker, um, what surprised you or what did you learn through the process, either in terms of how to capture this rather ephemeral work or, or something about just his whole process in general? There were so, so many things. I traveled with him, you know, because I didn't just want to make a film where it was a survey of his work. I wanted to experience it and make it as, you know, as, as much of a documentary as possible in the sense of where I'm documenting and, and making the film and, and finding the story through, um, through exploration and, and investigation. It took a while to gain his trust, but he eventually allowed me fully into his world and he gave me access to the people that participated, not all of them, some people, it wasn't the right situation, but mm -hmm. the ones that you do see in the documentary, um, he allowed me to approach them. And when I interviewed them, I had learned things about him and his work and the process that really surprised me, you know? If he doesn't interview them, he lets them speak their mind. And that became part of my process, too, to explore further. Because the uh, projections of each participant is only two to three minutes, usually, um, you know, he may record them for like an hour or a couple of hours. So you can't put everything in. But because he gave me that access, I was able to find things to tell my story. Um, but you see this with Lamise, who's the Iraqi refugee. Uh, she starts to talk about how uh, women had to go out and search for the bones of their dead husband. And um, she just spoke about, you know, the voices of women. And it was so powerful. And it is a really powerful documentary about a powerful artist who, um, I mean, just keying into something that you'd said earlier, that that almost the centerpiece of his art is, um, is letting people who've experienced trauma um, have their voice in a public space in a way that runs completely counter to the, uh, to the typical kind of imagery, the, the things that he, he projects against that glorify um, nationalism and war. And uh, so it's a remarkable piece. And, and it leads me to exactly why we program a film like this, you know, because um, our festival is, is at its center about uh, bringing people together in dialogue, um, getting them to uh, uh, not only uh, not only presenting and and uh, and curating uh, compelling works 
for their own sake, but we hope that people will take something back in their own lives and in their own communities, that they will see some, uh, you know, they will see something that's a model or a call to action that will help to work towards a more just and peaceful world. And so, you know, to that end, I think this film, you know, really uh, fits beautifully within our mission. And, and, and you, you started to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the healing. Um, is that something that you, you hope for this film uh, to, you know, as it gets out into the world? I do. I really hope that peace study centers, sociologists of war and peace, especially anti-war uh, organizations and organizations that are against uh, militarization. I just hope that they um, somehow find, discover the film and bring it to their audience because it's important for war veterans, refugees, and anyone who you know, who suffers discrimination uh, because they're immigrants, you know, simply for coming to this country to uh, escape uh, death. Uh, I just hope that they see this film and get a better understanding that we're all human beings and not all of us are have the privilege of being born uh, in a country with a, a democracy such as in the United States uh, and where we have freedom of speech, you know, and we can tell that we don't like our president, that we don't, you know, like what Congress is doing, that we can voice our opinions. If you really cherish that, then you should want anyone in the world to have that. So I hope that this film kind of brings you uh, to their understanding, which is what Christoph tries to do. He's been doing this for a long time. He has experience uh, with this. But not only that, he has life experience of when you consider where he comes from, and this is featured in the film, he was born during World War II, and he knows what it's like to be living through the war. And then he went through communism. He went through authoritarianism. He knows what it's like uh, to, you know, to live under those conditions. People of his generation are disappearing because they're, they're older and they're dying. And it was another reason why I thought he would be a great person to, to feature in a film because those voices, we need those voices. We need people like him to tell us what to do, how to deal with these, you know, these atrocities that continue to happen today. Yes, th thank you so much. Uh, and let's move on to tell us uh, how people can support your work you know, we're delighted to have it at the Global Peace Film Festival uh, and see from the from the poster behind you that that you've been uh, accepted in, in several other film festivals. Um, and also what's next for you? I'm very excited that the film is available uh, through New Day Films and New Day Films uh, is a educational distributors institutions and nonprofit organizations, they can go and purchase streams through New Day Films. It's not announced yet, but there's a few other festivals that are considering it. And um, Oh, that's wonderful. And please do let us know once those things are, um, are firmed up because we love to give updates to our Global Peace Film Festival uh, social media followers about film and filmmakers who have been at our festival. So please do. Let us know about that. Definitely. We appreciate that. And thank you, Maria. This has been a, a really thoughtful discussion and we really appreciate you, uh, appreciate your film and Christoph's work. Um, and, and for all of you watching, thank you. Um, please do be sure and check out Maria Nero's The Art of Unwar at, at the upcoming Global Peace Film Festival. Uh, if you want to learn more about the film, particularly if you're an academic and you would like to uh, purchase this for your library or bring this to your classes, please go to un-war.com. That's un-war.com. And remember, this film is available through the New Day Films Collective. Uh, uh, that is a, 
uh, a, a well-respected distributor amongst uh, educators and, and library institutions. So you have done a good job in getting your film placed there. Um, and again, please, for those of you uh, who want to have the chance to see the film in person, please look up our information on peacefilmfest.org. Our in-person screenings begin September 19th and end on September 25th. And our virtual access picks up immediately September 26th and ends October the 2nd. Again, all the information, schedule, tickets, and non-film events can be found at peacefilmfest.org. Thank you, and we'll see you at the next GLOW. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. <laughs>